that down there, by the way, is the way to the final phase. I believe that's actually where the, uh, where the barrier shows up, if you don't, uh... I can understand to some degree what they were going for with the infamous cutscene. I mean, after all, you know, she, she did defeat Ridley multiple times, including but not limited to blowing up the planet one time. You can screw attack and like. I do find it kind of telling that uh, Team Ninja basically felt the need to just be like, no, no, the characterization of Samus and Other M, not us. That was all Sakamoto. We had nothing to do with that. Because uh, Team Ninja not exactly known for their uh, progressive 20th, 21st century portrayals of uh, Metroids are a little bit slower than the Zetas, and you can kind of get them in the late So. <laughs> Hello, Cyclone Kermit. And Reg. Yes, yes indeed. Alright, we are looking very good here. Probably the way to enjoy her hand from what I've heard. There's a little bit more. Hello, Top Hat Alpha? Yes, indeed. Green Metroid. Alright, we drop down here. And I love the atmosphere. Um, number one, you know, no more upbeat, kick ass music. You know, this is like the no-going-back point. And number two, note what's here, or rather, note what isn't here. Like, there is nothing. There are no enemies. There is just you and, like, this very long track to the end of the game. Um... Like, this does an excellent job of, like, making you feel just trapped and, like, more, like, alone. Like, the planet basically isn't even supporting life down here. That's how desolate it is. That's how it really is. I'm sure he's huge like Xbox. So the reason I'm space jumping over this water is because, one, it slows you down, and number two, there are actually hidden pits in the water. That, uh, they don't do damage or anything, but they do drop you back down.
Yeah, the, uh, the Omega... Omega. I was gonna say Metroid Fusion's ending, or the version of Super Metroid Inspired. But see, like, this is a long, long corner. And there's the final save point in the game. Okay, so, uh, I'm gonna take a risk here. Um, the right, to the right is basically a complete energy and missile refill, which I'm not going to take. Um, I am risking a surefire PB here, I know. To the middle is a, is an ice beam. In case, you know, you didn't have one before. But we're gonna take the left, we're gonna go directly to the end of the game. Here. Here we go, phase 9, or phase 8, as I call it. Alright, so here we go. I'm gonna come over here and- wait, what? What, not one? What do you mean, not one? Nine? What? Also, I love how at this point, even, like, the music is against you. Like, the music turns from just, like, being ominous to being, like, actively sinister and dissonant and just irritating. And it's amazing for the atmosphere here. And yes, unfortunately, you do have to kill all the Metroids in this area. If you try and go to the Metroid Queen before you've killed all of the regular Metroids, she just doesn't appear. did, uh, experience with that. Oh, gosh. Yes, Metroid, now, how is Babby formed? Metroid figured it out. Regular Metroid like, oh, come on. Metroid, you want to get off of me? Oh. I am a lot less confident in this than I was two seconds ago. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you know what? I, I can't do it. I gotta, I gotta be able to it. There's a second ice beam. I'm, I'm gonna go around again. I'm still well on pace for a sub 2, so. If I had, like, another half an energy tank, I would probably have chanced it. And while I'm here, I'll just have this one. Yep. Yeah, that is kind of interesting how they did that. Actually, because you can get to the Queen Metroid's room, she just doesn't appear yet, it's also possible that they included that, because it drops you... It actually drops you in the room with the Ice Beam. So, like, maybe just if you didn't know what to do, that might be another reason it's there. Because it dumps you in the room with the Ice Beam. So if, like, you didn't kill all the Metroids the first time around, or you were stuck with a different beam, and, like, you didn't think to look up there for the ice beam, that could be, like, the game showing you a little bit of mercy and being like, hey, this is what you were supposed to grab.
Yeah, well, I'm I'm gonna be done after this. Uh, after this playthrough, I would say. Because I have a bunch of missiles, I'm going to use a hybrid of this one. So you can climb into the mouth and you can play them. The, uh, the really top tier speedrunners actually just use the bomb strategy. Uh, they just extremely precisely. Like, use the missiles to freeze her and then drop the bombs. Because they, like, don't have enough missiles otherwise to do anything with this. Alright, so we did it. And wait, what's what's this? Oh, that's a little baby Metroid. Interesting note, the uh, the Galactic Federation apparently didn't calibrate for Metroid larva. Or like baby Metroids, because you'll note that the Metroid counter still reads zero. Just an interesting This is a, uh, a nice improvement over my previous one, even with having to bail out. In, uh, in the, my previous best, the 215 real time, 210 in game, I actually I grabbed the energy refill. I actually lost a little bit of time here um, compared to that run because I grabbed the energy refill first, which meant I only had to do one loop around instead of two. Point one doesn't count. Yeah, there you go. Close for that turn. And done. One forty-two forty-three. A nice new personal best. Hello, you can do it for turn three. Sorry. Thank you. FBI, please. FBI, please. My ball. Oh yeah, let me, uh, let me take a look at this, uh... Well, it's gonna be hard to beat by 32 minutes, no doubt. Um, but... I mean, I still made some root errors, and, you know, there, there were still some big mistakes. See a uh, two-piece bikini sandwich. I love this music too. Yeah, Kureshi, by the way, is an awesome map maker. He does these like super cool hand-drawn maps. At uh, at the first AGDQ, he just like on the uh, not poster board. What do you call those things? Uh, the easel. That had the paper on it. He just like drew this amazing Legend of Zelda map, I believe from memory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll see what the in-game time is. It'll be probably around one, maybe a couple one forty. One thirty nine, all right. Couple one forty in game. And uh because of the way the Game Boy player's color palette is, Samus's hair is red here as opposed to I believe she's blonde. 